Alice Meza. Today I have a special guest. This is my sister Jane, my older sister Jane, and she's visiting from Uganda, Kampala to be precise. And we want to make a very special dish for you today. And first off, I want to start by apologizing for my absence. I know a lot of my subscribers have been sending me emails wondering where I am. I had guests. I was blessed with guests. My brother and his family came to visit from Turkey. And now I'm still here with my sister who's visiting from Uganda. So I just decided to take some time for us to prepare something for you that was special for us growing up. Today we'll be making some fish, some tilapia fish just in curry sauce with some skuma wiki and I've done a video for the skuma wiki in my Kenya meets Morocco meal and we'll also be making ugali to eat with this so today the two things we'll be making is a curry fish and the ugali and the skuma wiki if you want to learn the recipe for that you can check out my other video the uh, Kenya meets Morocco meal okay so I'm going to take you down to the ingredients to show you what you need to get started but just to let you know this is a very popular dish in Kenya especially amongst the people of the western part of Kenya, okay? Because we live by the lake and tilapia is uh, fresh water fish, so we cook a lot of this. So I hope you're ready to get started and I'll take you over to the ingredients list. All right, being as we're cooking some tilapia, this is what I have here. I went to the farmer's market and I got fresh tilapia. I know a lot of you are freaked out by the fact that the skin is on there, but just to let you know, the scales were taken off. It came with the insides cleaned out, the scales taken off, which is quite different than the way we do it in Kenya because a lot of times in Kenya the fish comes whole and you have to clean up the inside and everything so we trimmed it we clean the inside you have to do a very good job of cleaning the inside you want to get out any bloody residue make sure it's nice and fresh we cut the tail off we cut the head off and that's because hubby gets freaked out when the head is on there and the tail is on there so I just left the middle parts in there so that I have here three tilapia fish whose heads and tails have been taken off and then as far as other ingredients to use, I have here around a teaspoonful of garlic, which is this. I just got some minced garlic and I went ahead and um, used a modern pestle to make a paste out of it. And I have here about two tablespoonfuls of coriander or uh, cilantro. And I have here about a card and a half just cut into little rounds. And I have here one 7.5 ounce can of diced tomatoes. You can use fresh tomatoes, around three would do. And I have here half an onion, and the other half is on the fire um, cooking. You know, we're trying to saute so they, they're nice and golden brown before we can add the other ingredients. Now, over here, I have some uh, flour. Can I see that packaging? Thank you. Now, this is what it is it's corn flour, and I use this. I got this at the uh, supermarket, okay? It's, it's about a Goya brand, it's called Masarepa, it's white cornmeal. And there's those who use like uh, brown, what is it, millet flour? Mm -hmm. Yeah, millet flour, and that's a different kind of ugali. It's very sticky, but it's very nutritious. And then I have some garam masala that we're going to use to fry the fish right here. I'll bring it closer. And I have, um, this is a Kenyan spice mix called Mchuzi mix. Actually, you can find this anywhere in East or Eastern Africa. And I have an Amazon store where I sell this. So I'm going to include a link in the description box to where you can go and get this spice mix. It, it gives uh, food a very good flavor and it thickens your sauce. Okay, it's very delicious. It's a little bit spicy, but that's okay. And I also have here some, um, that's a curry powder that I went ahead and put in this little container. And then I have mixed spices. Now, I'll do a video soon to show you how to make some mixed spices. All that's in here is cinnamon, coriander, nutmeg, cardamoms, cloves, ginger, bay leaves, okay? And this gives food a very nice flavor. You can make this yourself by dry roasting your um, whole spices and then you can put in a coffee slash uh, spice grinder to get this powder, okay? And I'll soon do the video for this. This is just a typical Kenyan spice mix. And then you will also need some salt. Now I use kosher salt to cook, okay? And um, I'm going to add a little bit more um, cinnamon to the dish, okay? I like that flavor in my food. And I'm using just regular canola oil. I refrain from using olive oil in this recipe because olive oil has that strong flavor in it, even just the one that's not virgin olive oil. And you want something that, a, a kind of oil that does not have any flavor to it. So that's what I'll be using today. And over here I have some water. Now it depends on how thick you like your sauce, what you're eating it with. Some people like it with very little sauce and some people like it with a lot of sauce. I put in here two cups of water, but I might use more or I might use less. But I will include all the ingredients 
The full list of ingredients and the measurements as usual in my blog, please visit it's www.stellasmeza.blogspot.com. Now I'm going to take you over to the stove where my sister Jane is sauteing those onions and then we're going to move on from there and start adding the ingredients and the fish. So give me one minute. All right, now welcome back in that pot. We have some uh, onions that we've sauteed and they're now golden brown and we're now going to add the garlic paste to it. About, around a teaspoonful of it is okay. And the reason why I put it after the onions are nice and golden brown is because garlic burns very fast. And you don't want to put it at the same time you put the onions before you saute the onions because the garlic is going to burn and give your food a very bitter taste. So you want to add it at the stage where the onions are nice and golden brown. So we're just stirring that uh, around to make sure everything's well mixed and cooked and that some of that garlic cooks down. And the reason why I use a modern pestle to make a paste out of the garlic, the minced garlic, is because I don't want little I don't want to bite into the little pieces of garlic as I cook. So once the onions are nice and brown and the garlic's nice and cooked, we're going to add the tomatoes into um, into the mix. I'm just going to move that out the way. I'm going to add the tomatoes in there. Okay, in one second let me get a spoon to put that in there with. Okay. And right now we're adding that into the pot. And the reason why I like to use diced tomatoes that are peeled is because I don't have to sit there and wait for the tomatoes to cook down. See the way sometimes people use peeled whole tomatoes? and you have to sit there and mush it with a spoon to make sure it cooks down. When you use a diced variety with no, uh, with, with a pill taken off, you don't have to wait for that. It cooks down pretty easy. So we're going to add that and then let it cook down a little bit. And then we're going to start adding our spices. Now just to let you know, if you think I'm a good cook, my sister here is a fabulous cook. <laughs> and I say this because I have eaten my her food growing up I ate her food if my mom didn't cook if she cooked we knew everything would turn out great because she knows what she's doing in the kitchen so I'm very confident this will be as tasty as my mother would make it if she were here herself all right so we're just going to start um, we're gonna cover it up a little and then I'll be back when it cook down just a little bit I'll be back to show you once we start adding the spices in there okay all right our tomatoes are nice and soft now and I also added about a quarter teaspoon of tomato paste. What this does, it thickens the sauce as well. So we've added that into the pot and we're about to start adding the spices. We're going to start with cinnamon. Just around, say, half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Let me see. Maybe three quarter teaspoons. Alright. There we go. Into the pot goes the cinnamon powder. And then we're going to give it a nice stir. And we do this just that all the tomatoes get all that nice flavor from every spice. Once you add every spice, you give it a nice stir. So whatever's in the pot gets a good portion of that um, flavor. So we're going to add some of that, um, what is it called? Mixed spices. Oh, mixed spices, that's right. That's what I read out to you with the cardamom and all the other spices. And I'm going to include that in um, my blog and I'll let you know exactly what's in there. So if you don't have the mixed spices, because I get this from Kenya, you can actually make it at home yourself. And we're going to add some curry powder. We're going to add about half a teaspoon. Of that curry powder. Now to make your mixed spices, if you don't have it already pre-mixed in a bottle, what you do is whatever spices that goes into that mixed spices, you put it in a pan, and just a small pan, and you dry roast it. Put it over medium flames, and once you start smelling those spices, it's time to take it off, let it cool. I'll interrupt that for a second. I'm going to add a little bit of garam masala in there, around half a teaspoon of it. Okay, so I was saying you let it cool down, and then once it's cooled, you can either use a modern pestle to grind your whole spices into that mixed spice or you can put it in a coffee grinder which also doubles as a spice grinder which is what I do and I just grind it in there and I have fresh spices every time okay and that I think that tastes better than you know store-bought but that's just my personal preference so to that I'm going to add that Royco and choosing mix it's a stew thickener it also has spices in it it has some cornstarch in there and I do sell this, once again, I do sell this in my um, Amazon store, and I'll include a link to where you can find it. So we're just going to mix that in there. And I wish you guys could smell up this. I wish it was smell vision It smells delicious. We haven't even put the fish in there. It smells so good. So you can see the tomatoes getting nice and thick in there. We're going to start um, adding some water into that. That way, 
we get some kind of sauce and it doesn't stick to the bottom. I know that's a nonstick pan, it's just out of habit. For those of you who do not have nonstick pans, you want to do this. Okay. And then we're going to give it a nice stir. And then we're going to add the cilantro or um, what do you call it at home? Coriander. You're going to add that into that mix. And this is about two tablespoonfuls of it. You don't need a whole bunch of it. We're going to give it a nice stir. And that n not only adds flavor to the dish, it gives it a nice color. Add that in there. All right. All right. All right. And I'll be right back. Let's have that cook down a little bit. I'll be right back with you, and then we'll show you what the next step is. All right. We're back, and what we did while we had the camera off is you see that nice thick tomato paste that we had, the tomato sauce with the spices and the coriander. I mean cilantro, what we did is we divided it into half. So I have half of it in a bowl. We're going to set this aside. Once the fish is cooked in that sauce for a while and it's nice and ready, when we plate it, we're going to put this up over the fish as a garnish, okay? So we're just going to add the carrots. Now I, I mentioned earlier I had two like peeled and sliced carrots. That's what you see. My sister adding into the pan and this is also to add a nice flavor. Also, you have your vegetables right there, your vitamins, and then also to give it a nice color. Okay. So we're going to start, and then we're going to add a little bit of salt. And I always add my salt to the, in the end because a lot of these spices are salty, like that Boycom Chuse Mix has some salt to it. So you don't want to add it before because you can always add more salt as opposed to trying to take it out once you put in too much. And we're going to add some water, which is going to dilute the saltiness of that sauce, which is what you will see here in a minute. So you pour that water into the sauce. So far, we've used about a cup of it. We're going to give it a nice stir to see where the thickness is at. And if for some reason you find that you've added too much water and your um, sauce is runny, what you can do is once that mixture starts bubbling up, you can take a tablespoonful of cornstarch and mix it with some cold water, about two tablespoonfuls of cold water. And as the sauce bubbles, you add it in there, it'll thicken it up, okay? And if you find you've added too, uh, like the water's too little that you've added in there, all you do is add a little bit more. And if you have Royco, which is this right here, that's a thickener I told you that has the spices in it, so you can add that. If you don't have that, use a cornstarch met method that'll make your sauce nice and thick. So we're gonna start adding the pieces of fish that we had set aside. All right. And you're going to put that all in there and then we're going to cover it up and reduce the heat on that um reduce the heat on there to um let me see medium low, just a little bit under medium and let it simmer there for I say 20. You see what she's doing? She's using the rest of that um tomato mixture that we take taken out the pan. She's putting over the top of the fish in the pan. Okay. So that way it has a flavor both at the bottom and on the top. And then we're going to cover it up and we're going to let it simmer for around 20 minutes on medium low. Okay. And then we'll be back to show you how we make the accompaniment for this meal, which is ugali. Now, ugali is has different names throughout Africa, and it's it's a very popular dish in Africa. I know in some parts of Africa it's called it's called sadza, in other parts it's called pap, but in Kenya we call it sima or ugali. So we're just gonna let that simmer down. We we'll back once the water for the ugali is nice and heated up. As you can see, it's in that red pot, and we have it on medium high. Once the water starts bubbling, we'll be back to show you the next step into forming that delicious side dish. So we'll be right back with you. All right, we're back and we have in this pot around three to four cups of boiling water. I have this on medium high and you want it bubbling that that and this is the water that we're going to use to make our ugali or sima we call it in Swahili. Now this is similar to the Italian polenta it's just a little bit on the heavier side but watch and see how we go ahead and make it. Now once your water is bubbled that way want to start adding a little bit of flour to it okay and you just add what she has in her can there is about a third cup but you add very little now the reason we do this is to make that water bubble even faster you can do this before the water starts to bubble and what it does is that the, the 
flour covers the surface of the water and helps keep the steam down that way the water bubbles faster and then you start adding um, the flour this is corn flour into the hot bubbling water okay there she has three third cups and then you use that wooden spoon they call it a paddle here we call it um, muiko in Swahili you use that to break up the lumps because the flour once it mixes with the water will create lumps so you want to break those lumps up and just stir as you go as you see what she's doing and the more flour you add in there the harder it'll start to bubble so you want to be careful at this stage because it spits out of the pan and could burn you so be very careful you see that it's mixing up the flour every time she adds some flour she um mixes it up you hear that sound and you see that jumping off the pan by the way those of you who've just joined that that is my sister Jane who's visiting and she's cooking us some ugali today and the more it starts bubbling the faster you want to stir because you don't want lumps to form in it there's nothing worse than eating an ugali where you cut the inside of it and it's just like flour falling out that's pretty gross you don't want to do that okay and that's the um Fifth, third cup, we're using this as a measure. See that? I'm sorry. A third cup. So we've, that's, a, that's the fifth one we've added in there. And you, as you can sh see, it gets it starts getting thicker. And you, what you do is you toss the uh, ugali in the pan and you kind of, what do you call it? Fold it. In English, you call it fold it. So from the bottom up and over, from the bottom up and over. And then it'll reach a point when it starts bubbling fiercely, you kind of smear it to the side. And then you let it sit for a little. It'll make a whistling sound, and that's when you know your gully is cooking well. You hear that? It makes a sound. So that's the seventh, third cup measurement she's added. And I'm talking again about this. Okay? That's the seventh one she's added in there. And you see it's getting thicker. And you want to move fast. If you do not move fast, your ugali will stick to the bottom of your pan. And we normally, at home, we use just a regular pan that does not have a nonstick on it. So with that, you really have to work harder, you know, faster, so that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. But I'm using a nonstick pan, so that gives, makes it a little bit easier. Now, I've seen a lot of people, you see what she's doing, she's mashing it to the side, turning and mashing it to the side. I've seen a lot of people who um, put other things in the ugali. Some put salt, some put butter, some put, I've even seen, like, shredded carrots, which... Is not tr the traditional method of cooking a gali. What we're showing you here today is just a traditional method. This is how we do it at home. No fancy anything added in there, which is equally as delicious as the other other uh, flavored varieties, I imagine. But this is how we do it. There's nothing wrong. You can jazz it up if you like to. To each his own. This is how I like my gali. Okay. And now once we've cooked, once we've finished cooking the gali and it's nice and done. What we do at our house is we shape it. We use the back of a serving spoon, dip it in like a, you can put some water in a little bowl and dip the spoon in there and then you put on your plate, you turn it up over into a plate and you kind of shape it. So we, you have to let it rest for a little bit so it can make it sound and that's where you know that your ugali, you hear that? The steam comes out. When the steam is releasing out the ugali, it makes a little whistling kind of sound. Yeah, and you keep turning it and turning it. So I'm going to turn this off. We're going to finish cooking this and I'll come back and show you what it looks like plated. Our fish is done. In the other part up there, I have our skooma week. You can see that cooking away. And for that recipe, please check out my Kenya Meats Morocco video. You, you'll have the recipe, I'll have the recipe on there. And we'll be back to show you the finished plated item. And I might even come back and show you how to shape it into a nice, you want to shape it into a nice semi-circle. Okay, like a cake. So I'll be right back with you. All right, now we're about to turn our ugali over into the serving plate and you see there, she just plopped it onto the plate. What I'm doing is I'm wetting my spoon and I'm going to use this spoon. It's a um, serving spoon that's wet in the back and I'm just going to kind of shape it. Now be very careful, if you touch it, it's going to burn, okay? And you want to keep that spoon wet, so that way it doesn't stick onto the spoon, but you give it a shape. Some people leave it the way it is. I like to shape mine. That's how we've done it growing up. That's how we used to do it. A little water at a time. Then once you're done, you can clean off your plate using a clean cloth. Okay. I'm going to finish doing this. I'll center it nice and beautifully and then we'll be right back. 
All right, we're back and I have my meal ready. So dinner is good to go, it's good to serve. At the far back, you can see the fish that I went ahead and served up. I just put on a platter and then put some of that sauce around it and some of the carrots and tomatoes and all that nice sauce up over it to, ga to garnish it and make it look nice. And over there I have the ugali and I cut a slice of it. I'm gonna put on the plate. I need to see what it should look like once it's nicely served. And to the side here we have a skuma wiki which is just collard greens. You can use kale or collard greens to make this recipe. Again, to find the recipe, go to my blog. I have that under the, um, what is it called? Under the Moroccan meats Kenya meal. Okay, and it's very simple to make, very nutritious. So you can see you have your proteins, you have your vitamins, and you have your starch. Now, we do not put salt in the ugali. It's because whatever you're eating it with, has flavors in it, spices and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna put it on a plate and you're gonna to get to see the end product. Now, traditionally in Kenya, we use our hands to eat this meal. You wash your hands and you use it to, you know, you just use your hands to uh, eat the meal. Now this fish that I have, I bought the, the whole tilapia pieces, they do have bones in there. That's how we do it traditionally. If you're scared of the bones or if you're feeding this to little kids, what you can do is buy the fillets of fish, use the same ingredients to make the same, you know, type of sauce. It'll just cook faster, but it's going to taste the same. It's the same fish. So I'm going to plate this up and I'll be right back with you to show you what it looks like when it's plated. I'll be right back. So there we have it, people. There's a plated product. You have your skuma wiki, which is basically, um, kale or you can use collard greens for the same recipe. I have there a slice of ugali and up front there I have some fish and I put carrots in there. Some people do not do that. I do that for the color and also for the added flavor. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. So like I mentioned earlier, we use our hands to eat this meal. Make sure your hands are clean. So this is what you do. Okay. I'm going to give you one on one uh, lesson of how to eat ugali. My hands are clean. You just take a piece. Okay. And you do this. <laughs> if there's too much trouble for you or if or you feel some kind of way about doing it, what you do is just use a fork. And then you make a little hole in there and you take your collard greens and some of that fish sauce and I'm going to break the uh, fish later on and then insert right... Mm, mm, oh. mm, 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 mm. I'm sorry to chew in front of y'all. That food is delicious. I haven't gone to the fish yet, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to take a little piece. Let's do that again. Repeat. And I know some people think, oh, the f it's weird to eat with the skin, the fish, the uh, fish skin of a fish, but it really isn't. You see that the fish is flaky, but it's done all the way through. I'm going to take a little taste. Mmm, mmm. That is really, really good. Such a filling meal. Very inexpensive and very fast to make. So I thank you for joining me, or my sister and I this time, as we took your taste buds on the culinary safari, and I hope you join me next time on Stella's Meza. Karibu, and thank you for watching. Yeah, 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 yeah.